Hey, what's up everyone? Chip here. Uh, gonna talk a little bit more about uh, part two of this making a tire tutorial. Um, so let's get started. Uh, here's where we left off. If you recall, I'll go ahead and delete these curves uh, and, uh, and get rid of those, those cylinders as well. I'm gonna go back to AI. This, these are some uh, tire vector EPS files I found online free. So I'm gonna just copy that and I'm gonna paste it in here. Uh, and then I'm gonna scale it up and uh, you know, uh, trying, to, trying to recognize where that's gonna fit on that tire. Um, let's, not, let's name these. But if we show the points here, we're gonna kinda get a feeling for, as you recall from the last video, how things match up. <laughs> so let's select those tires and we'll start, we'll start to scale, scale again uh, a little more. So the next few, few seconds, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Just shows me just playing with the scale, trying to figure out exactly, you know, it's between, let's see, one, two, three, or four of those little uh, uh, points, the, the, the little uh, vertex points, uh, cage points, if you want to call them. Uh, and, yeah, I'm just kind of playing around trying to get, get, get an idea of what, what, what's going to work here. So, um, and I think uh, once I've got that done, what I want to do is I want to ide identify just the, 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 the only, the unique parts, the parts that are going to be, be repeating. So I've I've done that now. I'll copy those, delete everything, paste those back in, name those. Those are the, or those are the tread outlines. Now I'm going to extrude, uh, extrude up <coughs> the tread from the base. As you can see, that's what I've done right there. Add a little extrusion, uh, uh, add a little depth to it. Uh, and uh, I'm still trying to figure out what that size is going to be. So what I'm probably going to do now is have to flow it on there at some point. So first, let's go ahead and line it up with the top of this. So we, we want to make sure it's tileable, so we'll start it here. And we'll use an array command here in a minute. Um, uh, and uh, we'll do the, uh, yeah, there we go. So let's take a look at these. Oh, got those curves. Got to get rid of those curves. There you go. So we select these guys up, rename them, call them, we're going to call them the tread solid. And now we'll use kind of use that array command here. Um, notice I, uh, actually before I do that, let's, let's go ahead and trim the size of these a little bit, meaning that we want it to be, we want this to be kind of a very uh, a smooth transition on the sides, like re regular tires, that are just not that abrupt. And so what we've done is we've added a few curves, now we'll go into a Boolean differencing from those curves. There you go. Delete the, uh, delete the pieces that we just differenced out. Isolate that. Delete, 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 delete. There you go. Okay, now, now we are ready uh, to uh, basically set it up to do this exact um, uh, array. Uh, so first, we'll set, set, uh, copy the tread. We'll go into the array directional. We'll use extent count mode. And here's 24. I hit the W for wireframe. I'm looking at the wireframe because I want to see it. I need to change that to a little higher number, 26. So I just keep playing with that number until I'm happy with, you know, the, the how close the treads are to each other. So that looks pretty good right there. Uh, now that I'm done, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map this onto the tire using flow. I'm just going to do three so it goes fast. So again, use the flow command as we did before. And here's the mapping. You see, whoa, that goes way too far around. So that's not good. So what I need to do now is I'm going to just select those and I'm going to uh, uh, just shrink them, uh, make them shrink them width-wise. I use a, let's see, size command. So there they are. And uh, you can just drag that. There you go, drag it. So I'll drag it in like so. Select some stuff again. Do another test. So I kind of use this method a lot to test this and find out, you know, Again, it may be a little too far over, so that's kind of uh, it's kind of a, a a little bit of a, a hit or miss technique, but uh, or ad hoc technique. But you just keep tweaking it until you get come up with something that you like. So, and I think here we're getting pretty close, except for the fact that I don't like how how that taper is coming off of there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so probably what I'll do is I'm gonna. Redo that taper. Just delete all these. I can go back and get the just get the ones that you know. The, make sure I 
the original tileable ones, and let's go ahead and add a new, add a new taper. There, it's a little more. There we go, a little more subtle. Something like that. There we go. And then again, so once we get that curve built, it's pretty easy to cut mirror it to the other side. Once it's mirrored, I can just select my tires and boolean subtract them all, and then come in here and delete them. Or delete all the pieces that we just cut off. There we go. There, that's better. And then once again, we'll select all and uh, uh, I'm going to do it again the directional uh, with extend and uh, the array directional, right? And so now what we've got is we have basically our treads. I'm going to do a quick another map on our tire using flow and we'll see that there it is. I think that's about pretty close to what we want. Looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so uh, so now uh, let's go ahead and maybe just make it a little bit not quite as thick. So I've just used the scale one D to to check that out. So I, so it's not quite as uh, thick of a flow or th uh, thick of a tread. There you go. So that looks a little. Uh, I think I like that a little more. Okay. So that's how I adjusted the, the height. Okay. So now, by the way, I matched that that one D command to my H key, and uh, I like that. I, I like the one D, and I like the three D. I don't use two D very often, so I don't map it to a key, a particular key. So next, we want to do is we're going to add some text. So um, pick a base point, and one of the keys on adding text, for some reason it's in the draw solid, but uh, notice the create, it's create curves. I've added some text and I've used Helvetic and Nui and I'm using bold and italic on that and I, I'm just creating curves. So uh, once I'm done with that, actually height doesn't make any difference, or the, the height is actually changing the size of the text and the, the thickness doesn't make any difference here. And then hit done because I'm using curves. So I hit done. And now I have my text, and now I select it, and now I call it text curves. And the next part of this is we just need to position it. So, of course, rotate it, drag it into some kind of position. Uh, once we get it positioned to some, something that we like, let's extrude it. And unlike the treads, the treads are we're adding to the surface. These we're going to cut away from the surface. So we're going to, have to drop these down a little bit lower into the actual uh, into the actual uh, uh, surface itself. So there we go. There and then now once we have it on there, before I drop it down, let's go ahead and map it. Make sure that it's sitting where we want it to be using flow. So there it is, and you can see it's kind of too low. So we're going to, have to move it closer to the tread on the inside there. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just way too low. Okay, so we select the text and we just move it, transform it, there you go. And I think that should be better. Let's go ahead and do another quick flow, see what it looks like. And here we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We like that, like that, just fine. So now that's done, uh, we'll need to replicate it because we're going to have the top and the bottom. So we'll select it and I first started doing it this way and I think I'm going to change it later on. We'll see how I did it. But what I'm doing is I'm moving it from the bounding point to the middle and then I'm basically doing again an array directional extent count using a count of only three of three. And I can drop it down, drop it down so you can see now. now so that's kind of nice, but the problem is, is that if it, if it doesn't meet up perfectly and we slice those off, we could get a little bit of a, uh, some hairy detail on that, on that edge. So, uh, so what I've done is I've actually gone back now and I'm, let's move it down. So that's, that's the depth that we're going to cut into the, into it right there. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that's how deep we're going to cut into the actual tire on the sidewall. Uh, so what we've done then is uh, I've gone back and rethought how I want to do uh, the basic 
um, uh, text here. And so what I'm going to do there is uh, basically, well, first I'm I'm doing a quick, as you can see, I just did a uh, a rotate of the text. So I took all the text and rotated it 90 degrees about the middle. That's what that diagonal line you just saw was. So you can see that it's going to be correct. I can't just mirror it because then I'll have the text will be reversed the wrong direction, which which doesn't work. And then what, uh, before I, before I move the text, I'm going to just basically boolean chop off the ends of the, everything here. And this is where I, I was telling you that I want to. Have, I think I'll have problems at the end of it. So, but for now, this this at least we'll see how we cut this off. Cut that off. And go cut this off. Again, boolean subtraction with the rectangle. Okay, so now I look and see that I don't like the way that text is. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to move it around. And I've deleted the bottom part, and I'm going to draw a line off from this piece right here. Delete these. And I'm going to draw a little line directly off of there. A little positioning guide. And delete that. Okay, so... And since now I just move that anywhere in, in the middle of it, and now I just copy it and paste it and then do a, a transform or move. Just move it right down to that particular line we just did. There we go. And delete this. And now you'll see when we show the whole uh, tire that now we've put it. Now this, so it's not going to be cut up. It's not cut up in the middle. So but it's still 180 degrees because we use the, this the sizing from the previous one, the vertical side height from the previous one. So, okay, so uh, so now, uh, after a lot of trial and error, I really come to figure out that, that this is the best way to do this. So I just create a rectangle around that. I don't want to use the existing rectangle because it's got all those knots. This is just a plain rectangle. If you use the existing one with the knots, it's not going to map correctly. Use a plain rectangle and extrude that plain uh, rectangle. Uh, the distance, we, and I think we use on seven, but that's going to be the actual. Now that's the actual tire wall, right? So now I've, I select. There it is, right there. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to I'm going to basically do a boolean subtract of the text. And once I do that, there. So now the, it's thinking. Okay, now I've got the text cut out of the side wall, and now I'm going to basically union. The tread on top of that. So I did that plain rectangle, and then I unioned, made up, made it, made it a, a, a rectangular solid, and then unioned and subtracted to get to my fine thing. Now I'm just basically do a flow of this. Remember, I have that other plane underneath there, that tire plane right there. I just turned it on, that original one, and now I'll do the flow. And because I'm close to one angle edge and close to the other edge, it flows. This took a lot longer. This, by the way, I had paused it, but. So you can see it done. I'm going to select my tire. I'm going to cut it. Okay. And delete this. And then paste the uh, uh, paste it back. And let's hide everything else. And here we are. Uh, this is the here's the tire. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, and uh, now the next step is going to be to let's take it into let's take a look at it, but we'll take it into KeyShot. Select it. I actually tried to chamfer it, and just I realized it was going to take too long, and it was not going to work out anyway. So I just I'm going to take this into KeyShot key shot now. Export it as OBJ. You're saying why don't you export it as, as NURBS? Well, because uh, I want to actually put a little edge on a little chamfer on everything on there. So here's my meshing options. I love the angle at 12 in this case because it's not because the divide larger than is going to supersede the 12 and the 12 will only be used on really small, small fillets. So that works out pretty good. Um, okay. Now open up, uh, let's open up Keyshot. This is the new uh, Keyshot 6, really kind of nice. I have to say I, I uh, like it quite a bit. So here we go. Keyshot's open. Size it. Let's import the model, find that object that we just did, and let's uh, import it. Adjust the camera, we can kind of import it. There it is. Here's a nice 
our nice uh, tire. Let's drag the tire texture on there. Pretty good. And let's put the background, get our background color in here. And now here we're going to go and add these little edges I was telling you about. This is called rounded edges. I'm going to add, add them so I can see them. So zoom in. Start, start to see a little bit of the edges there. Keep adding, get bigger. Yeah, one. Yep, you can start to see them right there. Look on the M, the Moi D, the, the, the words. Look that, look, that looks good. So, rotate it around, get it where I like it. Set the lighting up. There, just hang so we can kind of get a little bit of a relief on that. Let's double click on there, we'll turn the roughness down on that tire. And then we want to add a little bit of a kind of a pebble texture to it of some kind. Go to the diffuse channel and add a 3D texture uh, noise. And now while we have it, this high contrast color, let's adjust the scale of it so we can see where those no the, how that noise is going to look. And two point. There's five, that's way too strong, so we can bring it back down. 2.3 looks like it's going to be all right. Add the same bump noise. Back, change the color. We're going to just drag that down about there. And starting to look good. And then uh, go back to the bump, and we're going to bump, bump the bump up. And now you see that we got a pretty nice texture working out for our tire. So, anyway, so that's basically. Uh, technique that uh, works pretty good. I think that um, I tried actually before putting, um, uh, tried to bully in all those, you know, putting the, all the tread and the words and then bully them directly on the, the object and it really wasn't going to work. You really need to set the whole thing up as one and then wrap it around. So anyway, that's about it. Thanks, thanks everyone. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.